I used the utmost of my ability to persuade them to a free confession. This is On the Record at the National Archives, uncovering the past through stories of everyday people. You're listening to a three-part series examining some of our most sensational, significant and intriguing trial records. They seem to have believed they were protected by something called the custom of the sea. She was approached by a man wearing black who said that if she would give him her soul, she would want nothing but she should have power to hurt whom she wants, both man and beast. I mean, you're talking about a time when there's no fingerprint evidence, let alone DNA or CCTV. If a sheep gets stolen and nobody sees it being stolen and nobody finds the sheep in your backyard, how do you know who stole it? This young lady produced really, really detailed statements about how he tried to convince her that premarital sex was the norm in Scottish society. In many ways, this singular item, I would argue, was the downfall of Oscar Wilde. The trial by iron required the accused to hold a red-hot iron for a certain amount of time, and the wound would then be bandaged and re-examined three days later. If the wound was clean and healing nicely, then a priest would proclaim that God had judged them innocent and allowed the wound to heal. But if the wound were infected and inflamed, then the accused was judged guilty. Causing harm by witchcraft was a crime and was therefore tried like a, like a crime. And it was something that the police perceived to be a way of expressing sexual identity as well as the clothes. They were asked what happened and how on earth did you survive? They didn't say, oh, I'm um, way to Churchill, which they did. They say, wait, the cabin boy, of course. And they both agreed that they would have no jury, but instead would have trial by combat. It's just sort of archetypal shit for X story, really. <laughs> 